All right, so before moving on to the third part of this episode, um, I wanna show you a little bit how a camera works. Even though this is not an in-depth tutorial on how to expose in order to get good images, this will give you the principles that regulates the exposure equation and how you can modulate the light that hits the digital sensor. One important thing to know is that there are different kinds of cameras these days that have different technologies. And what I'm going to show in this example is a DSLR, so a digital single lens reflex. So I have uh, here my digital uh, single lens reflex body and uh, obviously there is a sensor here inside the, the, uh, the body itself and obviously we can attach lenses here. Now before attaching the lens onto this camera uh, you have to know that in this case because this is a digital single lens reflex um, there is a mirror that basically reflects the light onto the viewfinder which is behind the camera here so that you can actually see the image uh, on with your eyes behind the camera through the lens so you can actually see what the lens is doing. And the reason is that uh, at the beginning of uh, digital technology uh, we couldn't expose the sensor all the time uh, to the light but today there are mirrorless camera like the one that I'm using to shoot this video that have the sensor always exposed to the light so you can actually see the image through the screen through the LCD of your camera instead of having to look through the viewfinder of the camera and then raising the mirror to expose the sensor to the light. These ones are still very much used and probably they have the largest amount of lenses available and are also very solid and very reliable but more and more people are actually switching to mirrorless cameras because they are smaller more compact and they offer other advantages so what is important about the body and exposure um, this uh, mirror here opens up whenever we release the shutter button and the shutter is nothing else than a curtain that is basically in front of the sensor that opens and closes and lets the light come into the, uh, come into the camera and hits the sensor. So for how long this shutter is open, this curtain is open, is called shutter speed and is one of the parameters of the exposure equation. So remember that this is uh, what's affecting how much light is hitting the sensor. If the curtain is open for a long period of time, the amount of light that is coming into the camera and hitting the sensor is greater. And obviously if the shutter is uh, opening and closing really fast, you have a very minimum amount of light hitting the sensor. And this is important because different shutter speed lead to different results in the visual appearance of the uh, photo. But uh, this is something that we will see when we actually go out and use the camera to take a picture. Now to this body I can attach the lens but before attaching the lens we have to learn about another parameter on the lens. So first of all uh, a lens is made of many elements which are other basically lenses inside it and the light hits the, the, the first element of the lens and then goes through all the other elements and then finally comes out of the lens so that it can hit the, the sensor. Now what is important here is that the last part of the lens has a hole that can be opened and closed manually by the user through the camera settings and this hole is called aperture. Obviously if the hole is bigger more light will go through the lens and hit the sensor. If the hole is smaller you will have less light hitting the sensor. Now each lens has a different aperture and that's what also makes the lens more or less expensive. Lenses that let a lot of light through are more expensive because they require more elements in order to converge the light into this you know, cone that then hits the sensor and also are more expensive to, uh, to build. And the aperture of the lens is measured in f-stops. So what is an f-stop? Well, the f-stop is purely a mathematical measurement and is calculated based on the aperture and the focal length itself. So it's just a measurement, it's a mathematical formula and defines basically the aperture in millimeters of the lens. So you have lenses that have an aperture of 1, 1.2, 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8 and so forth and so on. And this number might be a little bit weird at the beginning, but it's easy to understand when you learn why these are the numbers that represent the f-stop. And the reason is that each f-stop 
let twice the amount inside the, the lens. So an f2 compared to an f1.4 let half the amount of light going through the sensor. And the highest number of the f-stop represent a smaller hole value, while smaller values for the f-stop represent a uh, bigger hole. That's why the more expensive lenses are those that have an f-stop smaller. Like this one, for example, is a 2.8 lens, 105 millimeter. And it's a pretty expensive lens because it lets a lot of light in at the aperture of f2.8. So each stop number is calculated based on a simple mathematical formula, which is the square root of two squared by uh, the, the amount of stops that you need. So for example, the square root of two gives you 1.4. The square root of two square two gives you two and so forth and so on. So that's how the f-stop are calculated. And everything is based on the square root of two squared because every time you open an f-stop or you close an f-stop, then you're letting twice the amount of light in or half the amount of light. So it does make sense and it's much easier to remember uh, instead of learning the scale of the numbers here. At the beginning it was really weird to actually remember these numbers, like why these numbers are so weird? Why didn't they use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? So that's the reason it's much easier to remember that way. So now we need to distinguish from f-stops and t-stops. f-stops are related to photography, t-stops are related to cinema lenses. And the difference is that when we consider the f-stop, that's a simple mathematical formula and there is no light calculation involved in that whatsoever. So it's just letting you know this number, how big the hole is, that's all it is. But the t-stops instead are numbers that represent uh, the amount of light that actually goes through the lens, interact with all the elements of the lens and then come to the sensor. So it takes into account the actual uh, uh, refraction of the light through the lens, eventually uh, any dispersion of the light and gives you a much more precise value. It's important because two lenses that have the same t-stops will need the same exposure in order to have the subject exposed correctly. while Two lenses that have the same f-stops might need slightly different exposure because the t-stop is measurement of light coming through the lens while the f-stop is only the aperture of this hole but it doesn't take into account what happens to the light while it goes through the lenses and that's why t-stop lenses or cinema lenses are much more expensive as well because they need to make sure that they are all consistent across the exposure range. All the T lenses that have T2.0 for example expo will expose your subject in the same way and that is not true for the photographic lenses. So now there is a third uh, parameter of the exposure equation which is the ISO that was called ASA in the old field times and this is basically the magnification of the signal that the sensor is capable of. Imagine for example that you turn your stereo on and you are listening to this music. The music is always the same, whatever the source is, a CD or an MP3, whatever, and uh, you are pumping up the volume, so are, you are in a way amplifying the signal. But what happens is that if you raise too much the volume, then the music starts being distorted and uh, you cannot hear as clear anymore. And that is because the amplifier can only amplify the signal to an extent. After that, you have noise and it becomes really, really harsh uh, to listen to this music. So a similar thing happens when uh, we amplify the signal of the sensor and we increase the ISO. The consequence of that is that uh, you will start having noise into the image and the most important consequence of that is that the dynamic range shrinks when you amplify the signal because you don't have that precision that allows you to distinguish each tone. So it's really important to make sure that your ISO are uh, set correctly and to shoot at lower ISO possible all the time. So now you have the three elements of the exposure equation and the exposure equation, I'll put it here, basically is nothing else than modulating the light according to this value. So you can have a small hole uh, to let the light through the lens and long shutter speed so you keep the sensor exposed to the light for longer time and then you can multiply this with the, with the increasing the ISO. 
So there are three parameters that you can uh, um, play with in order to change the way the light hits the sensor. And why you want to do that? Because each parameter affects the image differently, especially the shutter speed and the aperture will affect the way the image looks like. But we will talk about that when we actually talk about taking a picture with the camera. So I hope this starts to make sense for you now that you understand how you can modulate the light. The simple concept here is that uh, you have a media which is the sensor of the film and you want to capture an amount of light onto it. So there are <clears throat> different mechanical ways of uh, limiting the amount of light that is hitting this sensor. Alright, so let's recap what we learned in this uh, part of this episode. But first of all, we learned that there are tools that allow us to measure an 18% gray wherever we are, uh, simple tools that we can always bring with us and give us information on to which base our exposure to. And then we have learned that there is a measurement that is an IRE, which is a unit that gives us the signal and, and so the voltage of the image across the monitor. Then we have learned that the skin does not always match the 18% value because usually is one stop brighter, so twice as bright. Finally, we have learned that uh, we have f-stops and t-stops and how the camera works. So in the next episode, we'll bring all this information and we see what this means in terms of computer graphics and 3D computer graphics and how we can apply this concept into our renderings and our images. I hope that this video was useful and if you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends and follow me on the social media networks as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.